Greetings y'all, the name's Juno RJ and I just got back from an advanced screening for Fast and Furious 9. I was able to see this early at my local theater and now that I've seen it, let's get to the review. Why don't you give me your love? So Fast and Furious 9 is the fifth film to be directed by Justin Lin. His first film was 50 years ago with Tokyo Drift and his last one was uh, Fast and Furious 6 and now he's back for F9. In the ninth installment of the Fast and Furious saga, Dominic Toretto must team up with his friends again when they find out that a rogue agent was going to spawn a cyber attack only to find out that the rogue agent happens to be Jacob Elias Dom's little brother. There is a fun fact about the title. You know, 10 years ago Justin Lin released Fast 5 but in here it was marketed as Fast and Furious 5. And then and when Fury 7 came out, it was titled as Fast Fury 7. And with the 8th film, it's titled The, Fa the Fate of the Furious. And in here, it's titled as, you guessed it, Fast and Furious 8. And now with the ninth film called F9, The Fast Saga, I'm just gonna call it Fast and Furious 9 because that's what it's called. I mean, I, I don't know about the title. Like, they're trying to be simple, you know, like Fast and Furious. I mean, I think Fast and Furious, the fourth film, because they didn't have the four in it without telling us it's the fourth film. Like it just simplified from the first title and then that's why they just, you know, happens to have these marketing titles. But back again with Justin Lin, I like Justin Lin in the film. I think I like the way that Justin Lin was able to continue this franchise after the third film. He, he started with Tokyo Drift. Like the first three were like the basics to understand about the Fast and Furious franchise, but he felt like there was more to be explored. So he decided that with the fourth film, which was Fast and Furious, they explored more about the film. So that just rather than being a street racing, they wanted to get into to action while having racing at the same time and that's what makes the Fast and Furious movie fun it was him even without his involvement there were these great directors like James Wan and F. Gray Gray who were able to continue the franchise for instance James Wan who I really enjoyed his directing in Furious 7 even without Justin Lin because at that time Justin Lin was doing uh, Star Trek Beyond of course it was hard to continue the franchise especially with Paul Walker did fans are having a hard time living with that and there were also cast that were having arguments in the middle of making the Fast and Furious films with Justin Lin going back to the commuter after logging out for a very long time and we're like all right let's do Fast and Furious 9. This is also the first Fast and Furious movie to get a 13 plus rating here because even despite the PG-13 rating all the Fast and Furious movies in Indonesia were like 17 plus. The, the ones I watched with my age was basically Hobbs and Shaw. You know should have been Fate of the Furious but I had exam at the time. Fast and Furious 9 I understand that it doesn't have to be that violent it's all about family and the violence are very mild in this film so it's probably all right it's probably friendly and it feels like a superhero level film. All the girls there are dancing with their uh, revealing clothes you can still have that in the film, but with them wearing dress, just imagine without the innuendo, but just them wearing dress and that's about it. I mean, there's also a scene where, remember in the first film, there's like these wild girls doing the street racing. That's also there in the film, but there's not much of its uh, sexual content that was, you know, revealed towards the F9 because it tries to be family friendly with all Fast and Furious movies we've seen so far. Now, talk about the actions, of course. I enjoy the action in this film. The action was also great. I think the actions really did well and the stunts were really insane. Fast and Furious 6 was the greatest. I mean, come on, in Fast 5, you had to pull a vault while in the middle of the streets of Rio and in the sixth film they had to go against a tank and then the team having to take down the cargo plane that was fun in F9 this was like Justin Slim's best at you know pulling out the stunt I mean you had to have Dominic Toretto's car attached to a broken bridge swinging around the island like Spider-Man and then they have electromagnetics attached to their cars to to play with magnets it was enjoyable to have magnets in that film it was it was fun seeing the magnet scene I really enjoyed that moment I had a fun time seeing the magnet scene I thought it was the best there's that time where they I don't have to mention it but they did it like 20 years ago Fast and Furious was all about street racing and now they managed to do it they did it. That's all I can say. But apparently I had some issues with the Fast and Furious movie. It's about the ideas. Look, the moment that we have Justin Lin back as the director for Fast and Furious, it seems like um, Justin Lin wants to continue the franchise, but he had to look back at the previous Fast and Furious movies that he has done. He had to at least copy some elements from the film. This movie just went back to basics in understanding the film. Like, we, we don't need that. We, we already understand the film. Like, the movie can go on its own if it can stay true to itself without having to go back to basics. My point is that there were many callbacks to the uh, previous Fast and Furious movies and aside of that they just copied the same element. Look in Furious 7 we had to deal with Jason Statham who happens to be Luke Evans' brother from the sixth film and now in this one we had to deal with John Cena who happens to be Dom's little brother. And then there's a scene where they had to take place in the UK because look Justin Lin's previous Fast and Furious movie takes place in London and now they went to London again 
they went to the same location again as the previous film. Aside of that, they also had to go back to Tokyo because his first film was basically Tokyo Drift. Han had to be brought back to the film because uh, everyone loved Han, I get that. And they were like, all right, this is unfair, so we'll just bring Han back. And, and that's about it. They just copied some of the elements from the previous film and then just mix it up into Fast and Furious 9. Even if the moments they were not visible, I can still see it. I mean, they feel like they're running out of ideas. They're just like, we'll just be as crazy as possible as long as we can just go back to basic and then just brought what happened back then so we can just remind them this is what happened in the previous film and then just bring it here into the ninth film. One thing that supports that thought is that basically there are flashbacks in this movie. There's an opening scene where Dom and Jacob was there as, as younger versions of themselves. There's a younger actress playing as them, which I really appreciate. But the flashback just goes on throughout the movie. Like for instance, if you could see Dom just staying quiet for a while, then the the flashback just comes in and then there you go the flashback like it's just important to be there i mean there's a girl who just explains how she managed to lose her parents and then just have a flashback scene of it especially with Han, which i'll get to that in a moment so let's talk about the characters i mean i don't know think it's necessary i'm not gonna talk about all the characters especially but the one that it tricks me the most for instance like dominic Toretto, which you already know he's a badass in the film i'm just gonna talk about the ones that really intrigues me for instance like john cena i mean i get it john cena's in this fast and freeze movie you just see john cena in the fast and freeze film and that's about it but one thing i learned is that paul walker before his demise wanted uh, john cena to be in this movie so as a honor to uh, paul walker we decided that we'll just cast uh, john cena into this movie but Instead, he just plays the brother in this movie. But I felt like John Cena, even as a villain, he felt very powerful as a brother. He's, you know, he's misleaded, he's misguided by his past as we get to the flashback scene. And I thought that John Cena was alright in this film. I mean, I'm happy to see another WWE star in this movie, but I felt like, you know, John Cena's just... He's there in this film. There's also another villain. There's also another side villain which I don't have to discuss. His name is Otto. He's basically a jerk, a British jerk in this film, but he's like a secondary villain. Just like in the Fear 7 where we get a secondary villain and this one we just get, just happen to have another one. Side of that, we also get Han. Speaking of Han, I mean, I like having Han. Han's a fan favorite. Everyone loves him. I love him. I mean, it's also unfair to have him die immediately after the third one. And to make sure that no one remembers that, like how did Han die, they have to like reverse it. I mean, we have to go back to his past. There's a flashback sequence that was shoot throughout the film, and that was about it. Then we get to understand how did Han manage to come back to life. Natalia Manuel, I thought she was fine in this movie, especially with Tyrus Gibson and the uh, Ketch Parker. Jordana Brewster, I thought I was happy to have her back in the movie. Michelle Rodriguez, I'm happy to see her again in this film. She looks different this time. And then there's Helen Mirren, who only appears in this scene. And especially Kurt Russell, who only had made less appearance. Like, he was there filming the scene, and that's about it. I have to say this, but Fast and Furious 9, is an old school mediocre fierce film that went off the track. My parents asked me did I like the movie or how was the movie? I mean I would say it's crazy because of the space stunts and all that. I mean it's not a bad film but it's also an enjoyable movie. It's, it's good at the same time like you can enjoy it but in terms of story, I don't think it works. Like, this is Justin Lin, man, we're talking about. He could have done better with this film. He already knows where the story needs to continue even after being continued by other directors. Now it's on Justin Lin to end this franchise once and for all. Guys, it's been a while since I made a video. Aside of that, July, I'll be reviewing one movie a week. Black Widow, Space Jam, A New Legacy, Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins, and The Suicide Squad. If I can see that a week early before the US release, which I'm hoping that would happen. But yeah, that was my review on Fast and Furious 9. Have you seen it? What do you think of the movie? Let me know in the comments below. Are you going to see it? I mean, it's been a while since I made a video. I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, how I've been when I'm not making videos. There's been a lot going on. I mean, I just want to, you know, watch movies on Facebook. There's also some videos that I want to make, which I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm hoping if I have the time, I'll make sure it happens. I'll be able to get the video ASAP, especially if reviewing a movie theater in which I watch this movie. But for now on, that was my review on Fast and Furious 9. Here's the outro. That is all for this video. If you do enjoy this video, give it a like. That would be very helpful. And in the description, you'll find two links so you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Google+. I appreciate you guys for watching this. I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.